For me, the medieval period is a period full of intrigue. But how do you really understand when there's so much disinformation out there about the period? Who were the people? Who were the real people? What did they really do? What did they really look like? And how did they really treat each other? There's so much... The portrayals by the media and movies and television series tend to be very skewed at best. And sometimes you may as well not even bother watching. In particular, some of the more modern series trail of historical facts are so skewed, are so out of place, are so uh, poorly portrayed that it um, creates a lot of confusion. And so many people see these uh, television series and movies and simply assume that that's the way it was. Because when we tell history, when we talk about history, we actually have a responsibility to get it right. So, let's have a look at where we can actually find some really good material about the medieval period. That's coming up. G'day everyone, my name is Ben and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear, you'll find crafting videos into making your own costumes, you'll find DIY videos into making your own furniture, you'll find how-to videos into all sorts of medieval camping and that kind of thing. We do videos for, we analyse historical events, what happened, who were the key players, and why did things turn out the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you, and you might want to consider subscribing. So in this video, we're talking about Viking, and I'm doing a whole series on different early medieval and medieval cultures, from the Anglo-Saxons through to the Norse, the Normans, uh, and some of the other pinnacle kind of cultures of that specific period that we tend to see in the 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th century. And we will be doing those videos over the next couple of years. So, where can we genuinely find really good information? Well, the first place that I would look is going to be things like effigies. I would also look at, uh, I would also be looking at museums. Many museums have an online catalogue and so you can actually look at some really good uh, artefacts online even through lockdowns and, and whether you're overseas or live locally. With those uh, online catalogues tends to be some fairly good descriptions about individual artefacts, where they were found, when they date to, and I guess the context behind them, because context is key. Okay, so what else can we look at? Well, there's a lot of really interesting stuff out there. Try and find primary source information. That's a little hard, given that we're well over a thousand years after the event. However, there is good primary source information available. You simply need to know where to look, and you can find a lot of this without too much difficulty. For this particular time period, one of the best books to start with is the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, uh, as illustrated here, are in fact an amalgamation of quite a few different chronicles rolled into one. So there was in fact a chronicle for Wessex, a chronicle for Sussex, a chronicle for Essex, a chronicle for Mercia, and uh, a chronicle for Northumbria. And each of them tell a really interesting story, although the Mercian Chronicle from memory now is simply only exists in fragments and reprints that exist in different books. But the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles are a fantastic place to start. The first thing we need to do is we need to look at a particular period in history, we need to look at the precise culture, and we need to start narrowing down uh, the, the location. Because, for example, when we're talking about Saxons, Saxons were quite dispersed in Western Europe and their influence was quite dispersed. So, the same with the Norse, the same with, in fact, the Normans. Uh, so, we need to also uh, look at the, the time period 
because especially when we're looking at Normans, the Normans of the 10th century were very different than the Normans of the 12th century. Vikings or probably pronounced Vikings or Weekings, depending on exactly where you were and, and whether or not you were Norse or from a Saxon uh, descent. However, I've, uh, I've, I've developed quite a good library about the, uh, the so-called Vikings and the Norse. Let's take a bit more of a look. This is an interesting book by a gentleman called Gareth Williams. It's titled Combat Viking Warrior versus Anglo-Saxon Warrior. And it looks at the battles, the weapons, the techniques, and some of the tactics that went into uh, the particular clashes uh, between the, the so-called Vikings and the Anglo-Saxons. Many of these books can be bought very inexpensively online. You can also pick up uh, fantastic bargains at book sales, um, book fests such as the Lifeline Book Fest, uh, which is a big event that happens throughout Australia every year. Uh, some interesting online resources uh, and even things like um, eBay, Gumtree and Marketplace on Facebook uh, are good resources to be able to pick up some fairly inexpensive books. An Early Meal, which is a Viking Age cookbook. And this is really, really interesting. And I, I really highly recommend this book for those of you who want to take your research beyond just the fighting. Because we, we often tend to, especially males, tend to start with the fighting. But there's so much more to culture than the conflict. And I really like to explore the religions, the politics, the social impacts, the cultural impacts. I really like to look at the relationships and how those affected each other, the different elements affected each other. It's really quite interesting. So if you're interested in medieval cooking, this is a really, really, really good place to start. Osprey books are a really, really good resource as well. These can often be borrowed from the libraries and the Osprey Vikings is a, is a very, very good resource. Osprey uses some very credible source material and I really like the way that their books are put together. But this is a really, really handy resource to have. The Viking Longship is another really good resource. Uh, for those of you who really want to look at um, the role these ships played in the history of the Norse and the so-called Vikings, this is a really, really interesting book, and I highly recommend it for those of you who are interested in the seafaring aspects of Viking life. The Viking Hesair is another one. I, I do recommend this. This is really good, um, and it focuses on a very particular time frame, which is 793 through 1066. And it looks at uh, the role these particular people played within the military aspects of the Viking society. I'm using the word Viking a bit loosely in this video. Viking is not a culture and it doesn't define particularly where a person came from either. Uh, the word Viking has evolved a lot in the last hundred years. Strictly speaking, the word Viking really means to raid or to pirate and I'll be doing a, a video on this and what the word Viking means. It was really a word that was reinvented by the Victorians in the sort of late 17th, early 18th centuries. Again, reinvented by Hollywood to add that kind of drama and excitement and intrigue into their movies and to draw people in. So kind of a, a marketing platform in itself. Quite interesting. The Varangian Guard is, a, is another really interesting read. It's a good book to read and a, a really good resource to have. There's some fascinating tidbits of information in this book that really go beyond just the, the organisation in itself and it looks at individual people and how they affected the organisation of the Varangian Guard, the, the roots, the origins of this organisation and how it evolved and transpired across time because it's actually lasted for such a long period of time from 988 to 1453 so a fantastically long period of time far beyond the reaches of the traditional 
end of the Viking Age. The Varangian Guard by Jay Inman is another really interesting read and I it, it all goes into a lot more depth than the Osprey books do. I really like this. There's some very interesting points that uh, Jay raises in his book and it's definitely a book to, um, to, to digest over a period of time. Good recommendation uh, and I like this book. Not too expensive either. Food and Cooking in Viking Times by oh. Gifford is another really interesting read. Nice and simple, not an overly big book. There's only, uh, let me check here, 31 pages. But it's interesting because this book actually looks at, um, the, I guess, the role of food and celebration and big events, key milestones of the year within the Viking society. The Vikings in England is another really, really interesting read. I really like this book. Um, I, I think what's, what's most interesting about this particular book uh, is it is so focused on a fairly specific geographical location. So for those of you who are looking to understand the Viking raids and how they affected English society, this is a really, really interesting book. Uh, I like it. There's a lot of good source material that's been used and it really does delve into um, how this period changed and evolved. The evolution both of the Anglo-Saxons and also the, the, the Norse and the Norse settlers and the Vikings throughout this particular period in this location, as in the location of England, is really, really interesting. Um, I think it's also very interesting because this book looks at the fact that um, the, the effect of the Vikings was different in different parts of England. So I think um, Northumbria had a, had a different relationship with the, the Vikings and I guess that's what's sort of drawn out in this book than say somewhere like um, the Sussex coastline or the Wessex coastline or um, how that was affected in Mercia for instance. Um, I find that really quite interesting. Um, and some of the key people who were involved in that, I, I think there's some really interesting information in this book. So again, a really interesting read. I'd really like to know your thoughts on uh, this particular period of time. What are your, some of your favourite books? Please leave a comment below. And what are your sort of thoughts on my library, for instance, and how can I expand my library? What are some of your recommendations? What are some of your favourite books? And, and what are some of the books you'd like to read? Another really interesting read by Osprey looks at the Saxons, Vikings and Normans and the differences within their military organisation and tactics and techniques. Uh, I think this is quite interesting because while some of the differences are fairly subtle, because in some regards infantry is infantry, uh, you know, the role of infantry stays relatively the same. Um, and I think it's actually well defined by the Australian Army. The Australian Army defines the role of infantry to close with, it, to close with capture and kill the enemy, um, regardless of weather, season or terrain. So, whilst that's true and has been true forever, really, um, what, what is also true is that um, the, the different cultures looked at infantry differently and they looked at, they had slightly different but interestingly different ways that the infantry was used and I think the eyewitness series is fantastic and it's probably where a lot of us start our journey in, in terms of learning about uh, the, the, the medieval period. The eyewitness series uses some fantastic source material, there is some great photos in this book and uh, it links it to culture and context in a very precise way. I really do like this book and for those of you who are starting out, this is a really, really good resource to have. And I, I, think, it's, I think it's very useful for reenactment groups to have access to their own library. I believe that as a reenactor, we, we actually have a kind of a responsibility to guide and mentor newer members of the group into their reenactment kind of 
phase of their life and, and that's quite an interesting thing to do. And one of the ways to do that is to be able to loan out books. But this is a really good resource. There's another fantastic book called The Viking Warrior by the Haynes Group. So Haynes, probably best known for their uh, production of books on cars and motor vehicles and machinery. Uh, and they started, I believe, back in the 50s and 60s and did some fantastic books. I've had many of their books with, with different cars that I've had. However, this book is really good and, and, and similarly to the Eyewitness book, uh, it does have some fantastic uh, resources around photography and context and culture and how some of this stuff has evolved. So this is another really good book to get, not that expensive either. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I really hope you find it an interesting uh, guide. Please leave a comment below. Please tell me the sort of books you might be buying in the future or how what you think of the books that I have. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.